Hey everyone, welcome to episode 31 of Heroic Nonsense. We're back this week with another modern day G.I. Joe classified classic, the Cobra Ferret ATV and Scout. After just having reviewed the classified Cobra Singer, I was really excited to do another G.I. Joe spotlight with one of my favorite Cobra light attack vehicles, even more so because I never had the ferret as a kid. Stick around until the end for a whole bunch of G.I. Joe classified display idea goodness with tons of picks incorporating our Cobra classified collection. Grab those handlebars and let's hit the trail with the Cobra Ferret ATV and Scout. Semper Fidelis Serpens. So here it is, the Cobra Ferret, an incredible addition to the Cobra classified ranks with Hasbro giving us another iconic vehicle that appeared in tons of episodes of the original cartoon, with the added bonus of a brand new figure that didn't exist back in the 80s, the Ferret Scout. This vehicle hits all the marks of the original with some nice extra bonus features. I unfortunately don't have an original to compare it to, so you'll just have to trust me when I say it really does incorporate so many of the 80s toys' very cool attributes, including the Sidewinder type missiles, the front mounted lasers, side mounted cannon, and many of the decals, and it looks awesome. From the front view, you can see the nice detailing to the rubber tires, which by the way are instructed to be put on with the teeth facing down, as well as the bush guard which is new to the design, and this nice little mini tow hook similar to the larger Stinger version, though this one is there just for show. The laser is essentially a sized up version of the original with slightly more detailing. As I'm a sucker for cool decals, this one has something a bit cooler than the simple original Cobra symbol. It's the simple with the Semper Fidelis Serpens moto, first seen with the classified hiss on its packaging and then on the Cobra HMS itself, so it's nice to see this logo being applied elsewhere and in a different logo format. As far as decals go, they went all in on this, replicating most if not all of the original stickers. It even has a Coupe 7 decal included. This truly is a sized up successor to the original Ferret. The wheels are nice and chunky, and like I said earlier, made from real rubber, just like all the other recent ground vehicles released to date. They even have the markings on them from the original, with an updated number for some reason. The motor is also essentially a replica of the original with a nice silver finish, though the original actually had a full molded motor in this spot. You also have a bunch of extra bonus decals, including the more modern take on the Cobra symbol, also used for the first time in association with a classified hiss. Speaking of decals, check out this nice little ditty regarding the missile launch info. The Hasbro team definitely had a little fun with this by filling in the missing instruction details. I'll let you guys read this one on your own for a good little laugh. You can also see here the great bit of detailing to the steering unit's heads up display. I also wanted to highlight another difference with this back mounted rack, which is unique to the classified ferret and a nice added detail giving this vehicle some even more realism. The biggest difference is probably, at least in my opinion, the side mounted cannon, which was static and longer on the original with the new one being a bit shorter as compared to the body, but able to rotate. While the original essentially ran the length of the ferret, you can place this classified cannon at different locations to give it a bit of the original feel as you can see here. Additionally, you can take it off and use it as a handheld heavy machine gun, with this feature becoming a somewhat common design element for the classified vehicle line. And this in addition to the two handguns each scout comes with along with a knife. Finally, the back is nice and sleek with these very cool rear mounted lights and mean looking exhaust pipes, taking its cues directly from the 118 scaled version. Moving right along to the other big part of this set, the Cobra Ferret Driver. In this case, based on a female mold, which appears to be based off the Cobra Valkyries with some notable differences. Those being the ATV helmet, which is a very cool mold and completely unique to these figures, as well as the chest plate, which also appears to be completely new. Otherwise, they're generally the same figures and have the same small arms accessories as the Valkyries. Really nice use of different shades of gray with some blue highlights to give these uniforms their own unique style and feel. The chest plate really stands out on these figures and totally lines up with their role in the Cobra ranks as Cobra ATV scouts. Call out for these awesome head sculpt designs as well, which generally follow the same format for any of the Cobra infantry, officers, and stinker drivers. And these incredible helmets, which are so nicely detailed, hopefully they use these designs going forward for some other motorbike type riders. Note these little fangs hanging off the top of the glare protector part of the helmet, befitting of a truly ruthless Cobra soldier. Overall, they look great between the design, colors, and unique accessories, and are a nice addition to the Cobra rank and file. We're getting close to the action shots section, so thought I'd throw in a preview of what you'll see there, which in this case also shows how the Cobra Ferret compares size-wise and in look to the other main Cobra vehicles released to date. But before we jump to displays, let's take a quick look at how the Ferret lines up with the other classified light attack vehicles, starting with the G.I. Joe Ram, and moving on to the Baroness's Akira-style bike, and the Cobra Flight Pods. 
As for the Cobra HMS, which I reviewed, link here and in the info section, they kind of look cool next to each other. It also, I feel, gives a pretty good impression of what the size of the ferret actually is. There is, however, also a nice little added feature, which I alluded to earlier, and that is the incorporation of the Semper Fidelis Serpan symbol on each of these two vehicles, though each with a different design. It's these type of details that I love. Originally, I had assumed this logo was going to be used with the 788 teams only, but it appears to be expanding to the other Cobra vehicles in the line as well. Either that, or the Ferret is part of that team. Nice bit of lore you can play around with. Against the recently released Cobra Singer, it actually looks really well proportioned and bigger than I would have suspected. As you may know from my review of the Cobra Stinger, link here and below in the info section, I was surprised at how big the Stinger actually was. I actually say the same here, so at least you know you're getting a fair sized vehicle and cool figure for that price. I would also have to say that these two vehicles were the two that always stood out for me in the original cartoon and were the original foundation of the Cobra Army, so having them together in this size at last is quite a cool experience. Looking at these shots, I do wonder how cool the ferret would look in black and gray next to the Stinger. Perhaps we'll make one that way one day as part of the Hiss team? What do you guys think? Now onto the figures themselves. As I'm sure you all noticed already, I haven't stated the obvious yet, and that is that these scouts are gray and look very similar to the Stinger drivers. As these are totally new and unique characters, it's nice that Hasbro gave us some troop builders to add to the Stinger driver rank. Other than the red mouth plate on the Stinger driver and the chest plate for the scout, they generally hit all the same marks for uniform design, especially around the head design, though it appears at least to me that the scout is a shade or two lighter than the Stinger driver in person. Anyone else notice that? We'll end this section off with some of the ladies of Cobra that are in our collection and that have been opened, using the Cobra Island Baroness here as well as the Hiss Tactician that came with the Haslab Hiss. May as well throw in a Dreadnought as well, having Zorana join in on the fun, though I suspect she wouldn't get along too well with this group. Let's do a bit of a live review with some of the cooler aspects of the vehicle, including how it moves with these nice spinning tires which I said were made out of rubber, these Sidewinder missiles that come off and stick on pretty easily, I have to say. We'll spin around, you can see the front mounted laser that moves in all directions, pretty much 360, and the handlebars. Now we'll just put in some of these laser effects, these blast effects, you can use any of the ones that come with the other vehicles or figures. And here you can see that this side mounted cannon moves around quite easily, different from the original like I said earlier, and it comes off so that the scout or anyone else can hold it. And just a little back review from the rear section and you see that we've got these nice shock absorbers. All right, we're here, the display and builds idea part of the episode where we can let loose and see how these toys all come together. As the original 80s ferret didn't come with any figures, the cartoon had a nice rotation of Cobra personalities driving them, and for some reason I remember the Crimson Twins, Tomat and Zamot, using them quite often. Regardless, I do think they look the best on these ferrets, and I may actually keep them displayed this way, with the scouts being moved somewhere else, which I'll explain shortly. Here's a hint, it may have something to do with this group over here, but before I give it away, this is definitely a go-to display idea since the Stinger drivers and Ferret Scouts do look like they could make an awesome unit. I also like displaying somewhat cohesively and this setup definitely hits that mark. I previewed this earlier, but here they are in all their Evil Dead glory, the Range Vipers on the Ferrets. I don't know why, but I immediately thought of these Vipers being the perfect match for the Ferrets. Makes sense too, as the Range Vipers operate in the type of environments the Ferrets were made for. And before I give you some more Cobra display ideas, I figured I'd throw in a quickie of some Joe vehicles versus their corresponding Cobra ones. I personally don't usually display Joes versus Cobras and prefer to keep my displays separated by teams, not sure why, but this is definitely something you can do. And here is why I feel I have room to replace the Scouts on the Ferrets with some other Cobras. Given their look and similar to the way the Hiss unit operates, I think it would be very cool if the Stinger had a team of two per vehicle, especially where they look this good together. Expanding it out a bit more, I'd perhaps then give the ferrets to the Cobra officers and infantry like I'm showing here. Now you have one really cool unit of base Cobra soldiers that look great together and as part of their respective vehicles. What do you think? Is this the way you would go or do the Range Vipers or Crimson Twins work better? Let me know in the comments section including what combo you would do. Thought I was done, right? 
Nope. I had to try this setup as well with some original first cartoon series Cobra characters and ferrets together. I couldn't figure out why I thought of Storm Shadow on a ferret worked so well in my mind, and then I saw the original 80s box art. Storm Shadow was actually on the box driving the ferret with Firefly on his back, who we still haven't opened yet. I really like having it set up this way. Very nostalgic. To cap it all off, here's a nice diorama of a whole bunch of Cobra soldiers and vehicles preparing to head out to battle. If you would have told me two years ago we'd have this many Cobra vehicles for the classified series to play and display this way, I would have said you were crazy. Now here we are and oh how glorious it is. So many ways you can display the figures and vehicles and these are but a few of my thoughts. Would love to hear about your displays and ideas. Let's end this episode with a review of the box art, which is always spectacular. They just knock this out of the park each and every time. This figure has a team exploring the deepest depths of the jungle in a nice live action shot, though I don't see any hints of a possible next vehicle or figure in the background. The back has a number in the series, some cool info about the scout and ferret, including the scout's height, and some emblems that they've been consistently showcasing, which I'll need to look into one of these days. On one side, you have some art of the driver and those emblems I just mentioned, as well as a QR code that takes you to the Hasbro shop, while the other side has the full piece of art of the driver in a perfect comic book style drawing. As for the info sheet that comes with it, similar to the other previous ones, you have this schematic styled booklet showcasing the vehicle, as well as all the assembly instructions, which for me is always nice because it reminds me of the originals that always required assembly. So that's it for this week's episode. Hope you enjoyed this review of the awesomely 80s G.I. Joe classified Cobra Ferret ATV and Scout. And hope to see you all next time for a brand new episode. And remember, it's all such heroic nonsense in the end. Yeah.